Hi everyone, it's Marianne and for today's video, I'm sharing with you my Pothos collection, aka my Epipenum and Syndasis plants. Thank you so much for joining me today and as you can see from the title of this video and in my intro, it is Epipenum versus Syndasis plants and all of these plants that I'm going to mention in this video that are part of my collection, I consider as Pothos. And now if it comes to me in the comments and say synapsis plants are not pothos or certain epipenum that I'm going to be mentioning in this video are not pothos, technically you'll be correct. But if you look at the history of pothos classification, if you've seen any of my previous videos or even read my book, the Ultimate Guide to Pothos Plants, I do consider some varieties of the epipenum that is not the aurium and also lots of varieties of synapsis as pothos plants. And I never did so arbitrarily. A lot of people think I did so, but a lot of research has went into it. And also if you look at the houseplant community as a whole, it's not just me calling these plants as pothos. Even growers themselves are labeling certain synapsis plants as pothos as well. And there's lots of reason behind it. One, it's just easier to market the plant. And second, like I mentioned, historically, a lot of synapsis plants are classified as pothos and a lot of plants that are epipendum right now were previously classified as synapsis. And also pothos used to be a scientific name, but now it's just used as a common name for a lot of plants that are considered to be pothos. So in this video, I'm just focusing on my epipenum and synapsis plants that are part of my pothos collection. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Marianne. Welcome to My Wasteless Life, where I take you along my houseplant and sustainable lifestyle journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. I also share some personal and travel vlogs here and there. So if that type of content interests you, make sure to subscribe to my channel before the end of this video and make sure to like and comment down below. I would love to hear from you. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So just like my full dendron collection video, I'll be sharing with you clips of my pothos plants as I talk about them because they're currently not in this room right now as I'm in the middle of renovating it. But rest assured, I still have these plants in my possession just like my philodendron plants. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that at the very beginning of my plant journey, I wanted to collect every single varieties of pothos plants. At one point, I had well over 40 varieties of pothos plants in my plant collection. But right now, I have about five upper pendant house plants, plus two if we're gonna consider the two that I gave to my sister. So technically, it's still in the family because I still check on them every once in a while and about four synapses and again another one that I gave to my sister so also five in all so I have about 10 pothos plants that I'll be sharing with you in this video today so first let's start off with my epipenum house plants and of course I'm going to start with none other than the golden pothos and this was actually a latest addition to my pothos collection. I always had golden pothos. I've given them up in the past because they are very common plants. If I wanted to replace them, I could easily do so. But I haven't really replaced them until I saw this at Trader Joe's. <laughs> You're coming home with me. And here you can see why I got it. Look at those leaves. And this is not just like a camera tricking you. It is really that huge, like see in comparison to my hand. And for like $10, it is not a bad deal at Trader Joe's to get like this huge pot of pothos. Not only the pot itself is huge, but the leaves are huge as well. It's the biggest that I've seen at least sold in stores. Of course, in the wild, especially when I go to Hawaii, I have seen very huge, beautiful golden pothos. So look at this one. Look at this, how huge that one is. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. And it's always been like my goal to have a golden pothos fenestrate, kind of like a Monstera Deliciosa. So I thought with this golden pothos being as huge as it is, like the largest leaves is bigger than my hand, I could get this to that point a lot quicker. So what I did when I got home is I separated all the plants, kept the biggest one, and started growing it on the pole. I still have the other golden pothos that were part of the basket. I frankly don't know what I'm going to do with them right now. They're also still in the backyard. We'll see what happens with them because some of them also do have large leaves, just not as large as the ones that I picked out to grow on a pole. So we will see what happens with that. But I love the golden pothos. I prefer that compared to a philodendron bacil or any philodendron heterosanium plants 
when it comes to like trailing house plants that are pothos or pothos like uh, so for me a golden pothos is a classic it's timeless it's always a great addition to any plant collection it's a staple in any plant collection and even if you're not a plant collector a golden pothos just makes a very nice home decor so i always recommend a golden pothos to anyone so next one in my propendum collection is my mandula pothos i love the mandula pothos because for me among all the albo variegated pothos that one is my favorite and it's also kind of like one of the latest form or cultivation of pothos which originated in the university of florida and the mandula pothos is still a very much sought after variety of pothos because unlike the marble queen or snow queen or even the enjoy pothos it is still not as commonly found in garden centers and i even go to like plant swaps or plant shops where the mandula pothos is still being sold at quite a high price at least for a pothos plant so if you've seen my backyard series you saw my mandula pothos already trailing really really long however that pothos plant has been suffering from mealybugs since the beginning of the year and i never had any past problems with pothos honestly until this year and i'm surprised it was with my mandula pothos but i think it got it from another plant that i had which is the epipendum pinatum green or aurea which I already got rid of, but not before it infected a lot of my plants with mealybugs, including the Manjula pothos. And up to this day, it's suffering from it. So I finally decided to trim it and just start over with the Manjula pothos. And hopefully it will get better and the mealybugs would be gone. But, but during my recent trip to Lowe's, I saw some Manjula pothos being sold for like $8. And I saw one that has a really huge leaf on it, kind of like with the golden pothos. Not as large as the golden pothos that I found, but like large enough that I thought of getting it to also grow it on a pole. I've seen lots of houseplant collectors grow their mandula pothos in a pole and they look really beautiful. So I want to try that with the mandula pothos as well. So I got that one to grow on a pole. So hopefully it would happen. But yeah, when it comes to variegated Epipenum aureum, the mandula pothos definitely takes a spot. There's a variety or version of it that is called the Harlequin Pothos, which is honestly, it's just a much more highly variegated version of the Manjula Pothos. That one is also being sold as an exorbitant amount and labeled as a rare plant. Honestly, if you could just find a Manjula Pothos that's highly variegated, in my opinion, it's the same thing. And which leads me to the next Pothos plant in my plant collection which is the Snow Queen Pothos. So with this one, I didn't really intentionally keep it in my plant collection, but it's a survivor and I respect it. I respect a plant that has the will to survive. And having it grow outside, it is showing more of that white variegation. Come winter time, it's gonna revert into a Marble Queen again because it's gonna lose a lot of that variegation as it receives a lot less light indoors. So I love that plant. And if you can't find a Manjula Pothos, I highly suggest finding a very highly variegated Marble Queen Pothos that is the Snow Queen Pothos and it is just as beautiful as the Manjula Pothos. So the next two Epipendum plants in my collection is what people are gonna say are not Pothos, but to me, they are Pothos. A lot of people do consider them as Pothos. The first one is the Cebu Blue Pothos, as the common name goes. It is an Epipendum pinatum, however, not an Epipendum aureum. And I love this plant because of the silver green hue of its leaves, very unique compared to other pothos. And also the leaf shape is also unique compared to other pothos plants. And of course, it is the Cebu blue pothos. Cebu is a study in the Philippines. I'm originally from the Philippines. So that plant holds a lot of sentimental value for me, especially when it became a popular coveted house plant. It just gives me a lot of pride. So I really love that plant. And a lot of people have also tried growing the Cebu Blue Pothos on a pole because if you grow it on a pole, just like any Epipenum pinatum, it would fan straight. I mean, that's the same for an Epipenum aureum, to be honest. If you could grow it up in a pole, they would eventually fan straight, which is what is my goal with the Golden Pothos. But with Epipenum pinatum, it just happens a lot faster. I have tried to grow the Cebu Blue Pothos on a pole. Never really had any success with it, but at the same time, I also love it as a trailing house plant, so i rather keep it that way. But for the next Epipenopinatum in my plant collection, that one I definitely want to grow in a pole 
because it looks beautiful fenestrated and almost resemble a Monstera Albo, which is the Epipena Pinatum Albo. So this is the one that people would probably say, oh, it's not a pothos, but for me, it is so closely related to the Cebu Blue pothos. So if you consider that a pothos, why not the Epipenum Pinatum Albo, which a lot of people also considered a variegated version of the Cebu Blue pothos, but for me, it is not the variegated version of the Cebu Blue Pothos, but either way, those two plants are obviously closely related. So if the Cebu Blue is a Pothos, why not the Epipenum Pinatum Albo? So this is my Epipenum Pinatum Albo. I know I remember I got it as a gift, an import order gift, and one I probably got through a swap. I can't remember which is which anymore, but either way, I have it. I really like it, as you can see. I finally made it fenestrate. It is not as variegated as I want it to be, although it used to have a lot more variegation. So if you could see at the bottom of the plant, it has a very white node. So what I did is I made a cutting from there and hopefully whatever grows out from it would have more white variegation. And I did that for my Syngonium Albo and I know this is not a pothos plant at all, but when I did that for my Syngonium Albo, when it was like pushing out a lot of green leaves, I just cut out the part where it was growing green leaves and cut it from where the white variegation is. And now it's shooting out a lot of plants that are even completely white. So I'm hoping the same will happen for the Upper Penopinatum, although of course it's a much slower grower than the Syngonium Albo, but that's okay. But if you look at it, it's actually about to outgrow the pole already but I'm hoping for it to push out more growth that is more variegated, but I'm very happy that it's fenestrating and it fenestrates really quickly. I didn't have to wait that long. So if you can get your hands on our Epipenopinatum, especially if you've been wanting a Monstera Albo, but still couldn't get it because they're still quite pricey, the Epipenopinatum Albo is a good dupe for that. So highly recommend getting an Epipenopinatum Albo to add to your collection, not just your Pothos collection. So the other two Epipenium plants that I have are currently with my sister, as mentioned earlier, and one of them is the Neon Pothos. And the Neon Pothos probably is a lot higher in my list. I probably would trade my Snow Queen Pothos for the Neon Pothos if I could only pick five Pothos plants in my plant collection because that is such a beautiful plant. And for me, it has trailed so beautifully and never really had issues with it. Even when I gave it to my sister, who is not a plant person at all, she managed to keep it really beautiful and trailing really, really long and healthy. It has no issues at all with paths, with yellowing leaves and all of that. So I really love it. And as I also mentioned in my Podangia collection video, I prefer it over any heterosium plants, especially over its counterpart, the philodendron lion. So if you want a neon colored plant, I would definitely go with the neon pothos. And the other one that she has with her is the Enjoy Pothos, which is like a baby one. And, and as far as the white variegated pothos goes, the Manjula definitely takes my spot. But again, if Manjula is not something that's within your reach or that's available to you, aside from the Snow Queen Pothos, I would definitely recommend the Enjoy Pothos, which also comes in like slightly different forms. The Clay's here and the Frozen Jade Pothos, if you want to know the difference. Look at my previous videos. I probably also have an Instagram post on it or a YouTube shorts. I'm probably gonna put out a new YouTube shorts on it. So go check it out. So those are all my Epipandum Pothos plants in my plant collection. I would highly recommend any one of them to anyone who wants to add more Pothos plants in their plant collection. And the next five that I'm gonna talk about are Synapsis plants that I do consider and lots of other houseplant parents consider as Pothos. So the first one that I'm going to start with is the Syndapsis Jade Satin. And this is my Syndapsis Jade Satin. Normally, a Jade Satin would not have any variegation, like with this leaf, but because this has been outside, it did have some sun stressing. So it's not really variegation, but you can see from the newer leaves. I like this kind of like green but has that kind of pattern on it so so the jade satin is probably a counterpart to the jade pothos or the golden pothos and among all other syndapsis plants that we commonly know this is a syndapsis plant that doesn't have any 
variegation in it or at least doesn't have the silver variegation in it it's just purely green and i love this plant because i love the dark green color it has and also the thick leaves of the synapses and the texture of a regular synapses so i really love it that is probably one synapses that i would prefer over the jade pothos which is just like a green epipenum aureo not like the golden pothos that has like the golden variegation in it the jade pothos is just completely green if i had to choose i'll definitely gonna go with the jade satin and among syndapsis plants that have been entering the market this one is still considered somewhat rare or uncommon as opposed to other syndapsis pectus house plants that we see in the market that are actually more commonly available than the jade satin which is not variegated so that's the one unique thing about the syndapsis is the non-variegated ones are more coveted or are considered more uncommon than the variegated ones and the next synapsis in my plant collection also used to be considered a rare or uncommon syndapsis and it's not even classified as a syndapsis pectus it's classified as a syndapsis trivii i initially got a cutting from a import order and then i got one from a local plant shop and then costa farm started mass producing it and now you see it everywhere so the synapsis trivii moonlight used to be one of my coveted house plants so when costa farms mass produced it i was actually happy because it's within reach even though i paid like some money to get it previously i could easily get it now if i want to but if i'm going to rank my syndapsis plants right now it's probably in the bottom of my list just because of how common it is and not because it's common it has lost its allure but because it is common is probably the plant that i could easily get rid of because kind of like with the golden pothos i know i could always get it anytime i want it back in my plant collection because they're now so accessible but as a plant it is beautiful i love the silver variegation in it compared to the synapsis pectus i just love the silky satin variegation of it and also the minty sagey green color of the leaves I, and i just love the muted green color it has compared to other synapsis or other pothos plants it's a really nice piece of plant especially as a home decor if you want to add a plant as a home decor there's also another one that i highly recommend aside from the golden pothos the next one that i'm mentioning is kind of like the syndapsis trivii but is a syndapsis pectus i believe which is the syndapsis silver hero so this is probably my most uncommon syndapsis in my plant collection i did get it off an import order not a gifted one one that i paid for myself that i ordered through etsy which is a disaster i did a whole vlog on it because practically this syndapsis came to me dead and all i have left with is nose but the reason that this is probably my favorite synapsis plant and the one that i'm most proud of because i was able to create this huge tall plant shingling plant that has three poles now which is kind of like my tallest plant on a pole right now and i grew all of that from two or three nodes that are completely dying so i'm very proud of myself that i was able to like grow this plant from three dying nodes so it is my pride and joy my favorite synapsis plant and even just by itself it is a very beautiful plant the silver variegation in it compared to other synapsis pectus or the trivii moonlight that is more a little bit more satiny this one is more shimmery as opposed to glittery i feel like the synapsis pectus is a little bit more glittery when it comes to its silver variegation this one is a little bit more shimmery and it's just a lot more even all throughout the leaves compared to any other synapsis pectus so i really like this plant right now i have it shingling it is growing pretty tall it always keeps uh, growing its pole so i actually don't know what i'm gonna do with it but i already like cut it down a few times gave away sold cuttings just because it is a fast grower once it starts growing so i really like it about that but i don't know how long i can keep it as a shingling house plant because it just keeps going taller and taller and the fourth one in my synapsis collection is the only synapsis pectus that i currently have which is the synapsis pectus silver lady currently there are a lot of synapsis pectus in the market i used to have every single variety of them from the synapsis archerius the synapsis pectus silvery and to the exotica which i'll get to later the silver splash and now the silver lady so the silver lady is probably the most coveted or the most uncommon of them probably still has the highest price tag but from what i 
can gather, at least very recently, the prices have gone down and the Silver Lady, not that it's not as coveted anymore, but at least in the plaid swap that I recently went to, I saw that a lot of people already have it. I thought it was like, you know, when I brought my Silver Lady cuttings, it's going to be like a very coveted piece of cutting. Well, a lot of people did want it. A lot of people also said that Oh, they already have one. So it's not as uncommon as it used to be. But compared to the other synapses pectus, it's something that you don't easily find as well. The other synapses pectus that I mentioned, you could easily find them in any fine stores or garden center nowadays, and they cost as much as a regular Epipenum aureum pothos plant. So I picked the Silver Lady among all the synapses pectus that I had, not because it is the most expensive or most coveted one, but because I do like its pattern and kind of like with the Synapsis Silver Hero, although I didn't go through it that much trouble. I started with a small cutting of it. I got a single cutting that has like three leaves, so three notes on it. So that's what I started with. And now it is this beautiful plant, which you actually see right behind me. So this is the only one I have up here because I had to do a video for this pot for Amazon. And I used this as an example. But yeah, so this is a Sinasa Silver Hero. Highly recommend if you ever get your hands on one through a trade or if you ever have a chance to buy one. Those four synapsis plants, the synapsis silver heroes, the synapsis silver lady, the trivia moonlight, and the jade satin, those four are currently in my possession as part of my plant collection. But I do have one more that is with my sister, as mentioned, which is the synapsis pectus exotica. Now, if there's only one synapsis pectus that you could pick that is readily available to you, I would pick the exotica because for me, this is a plant that is very affordable, but looks very expensive. So it's actually one of my favorite synapsis plants. So I know a second ago, I just said that if I had a choice, I would pick this silver lady if I've only had one choice among the synapsis pectus. But the exotica is also a great choice among the common ones because for me, it is a plant that is very accessible and affordable, but when you look at it, it looks like an expensive plant. It has the bigger leaves and also the silver variegation is a lot more glittery and a lot more prominent compared to the other synapsis pectus that I mentioned. But yeah, so that's it for my Epipenum versus synapsis pothos plant collection. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what type of Epipenum and synapsis plants you have in your collection or you have on your wish list and what plants are in your pothos collection. I would love to hear from you. But thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please do subscribe. I come up with videos every week. And if you haven't yet, check out these videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a plantable day. Bye.